Love is a very powerful thing and has a capacity to transform us all for the better whenever we genuinely encounter it. And yet it is something in this current generation that so many people are more willing to stay away from than to encounter due to previous hurts and pains in their lives. And although that's something that's understandable, I think this is a component of love that we really need to wrestle with in order to legitimately appreciate it. So today's video, we're going to react to the skin deep, this time dealing with a couple who asked of an important question of why he's in her life and her answer is mind blowing. Tell him I got the juice. Why am I in your life? Hmm. Before we start, that is such a phenomenal question, right? I think that's a question that just answers a lot. And I don't, I don't know if that's a question that I've heard asked a lot, but I would, I would definitely look forward to asking this to certain people in my life. I'm biased. I feel like this should be everyone's answer. You're in my life because I want you to be here. <laughs> I would never at this point in my life, now that I'm, you know, in my thirties, I would never choose people that I wouldn't want to be in my life to continue to take up space. So you're in my life because I choose you because I want you to be here. I want you to experience life with me. Oh, and that's why I always choose you. Oh my God. Oh, that is bro okay wow no that that as basic as that sounds y'all right like as basic as that sounds because it kind of sounds obvious that's what i kind of mean by basic it sounds obvious well of course that's what that is but no genuinely speaking bro like that's the component of love that i feel like a lot of us in culture today are missing is the aspect of choice and what i mean by people in culture today i mean of course you see so many people parade that love is a choice and it's not necessarily in a confines of truth as more as it is like man this is just my preference this is what i want and because it makes me happy it should make you happy type of deal i really think more so in order for love to exist choice must exist it's kind of the same response that jesus gives us like jesus laid his life down. He went to the cross. He did it all for us without us having to do anything. He did it. You know what I'm saying? Like he did it. He was the example and gives us a choice to walk into relationship with him. And I think outside of the emotional stirring that takes place in relationships with others, the connections that we may have with others, as we're out here trying to test these dating waters and, you know, maybe there's that fear of rejection. I don't know if I'm going to be enough. Am I going to be enough for somebody? Like, I think we have to be willing to wrestle with the truth that love is a choice. I have to choose to love you, choose to love you day in and day out, choose to make a commitment to you that i think is what makes it so personal it makes the relationship and connection worth it is the fact that as she said i want you here and as much as the emotional stirring can be present the butterflies in the tummy the chemistry and connection that so many people talk about in their dating relationships without the will without the want without the the desire from the other person to choose to be there with you in that same space and honoring that together, it makes a mockery out of the marriage you're striving to have. And I don't necessarily think that you're going to get everything you want by clinging on to someone who doesn't want to be there in your life to such a capacity. Let me address this as well, because it's something that is almost a byproduct of dealing with this is obviously the rejection piece. And I want to let you know that if you've dealt with something like this, that it doesn't mean that you're not wanted. It doesn't mean that you will therefore never be wanted and never get into such a space. I think really what is being said there is just as much as you have the choice to choose to be in their life, you have to give them the same right to choose to want to be in your life and for you to be in theirs. And I think removing that right only represents a controlling aspect. And I think oftentimes that's kind of what rejection and fear of rejection looks like. Like we're not ready to give up that control, that ego and pride. We're not really willing to give somebody that level of access to us because we want to control the narrative in some kind of aspect, right? Like we want to control how you see us, how you see me. So that way you almost have no choice but to say yes. You have no choice but to be with me. You have no choice because I've, I've only presented everything that you want. So it just doesn't make sense. But in reality, that's not giving that person the right to actually honor you, cherish you, and love you for who you are and where you are 
and ultimately what you can become with that person. And so instead of taking that rejection so personally, my encouragement to you is to allow that to be something that inspires you to find the right person that wants to share that space with you. Because truth is, you can do all the right things and maybe the connection just isn't there. It may not necessarily make sense and you're wondering and asking questions, well, how how did that, how does this not add up? When in reality, I don't think it had a lot to do with you. I think it had more to do with maybe where that person was, what that person had the capacity for, what that person potentially was looking for personally. And maybe it just wasn't found there and that's okay. What we don't wanna do is allow that to become our identity and then use that as a weapon to then hurt others before we get hurt. What we want to do is be able to say, I want somebody who wants to be here. Because I think when there's a will, there's a way. And I think just as much as we have the right to choose who we want in our lives, we need to be willing to give that person the same room and brevity to choose themselves. And I think when we try to strip that away, we're actually robbing ourselves of experiencing true love. And more importantly, true love in the way that God designed it. For God is love. And so we're robbing ourselves of essentially experiencing God in a very authentic space. When we are forcing people to be in a space they don't want to be in, instead of creating space and relationships with people who actually want to be in our lives, we have an opportunity to love on, they have an opportunity to love us, and we can love and be loved in that space. Of course, aligned in God's authority, God's will, God's way and doing it his way through and through. So I appreciate you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, like this video, share with a friend who can also maybe benefit from hearing some thoughts like this. And shout out to Skin Deep for this interview as well, because it was, it was pretty impactful. And as always, until our next conversation, be easy and be breezy, my friend. Peace.